uh, the approach to Veda and Vedanta I will be taking will be in the context of the study of physics. Okay. So the Vedic tradition and the Hindu tradition does not make a clear distinction between physical and human sciences okay, that we have in the other humanities and the natural sciences. It does, however, make a distinction between a Purusheya and Purusheya knowledge. A Purusheya uh, uh, is, of course, which is not of human origin. And I would like to draw a comparison between uh, the Apaurishaya or the Veda and the Apaurishaya, which is Vedanta, okay, which is the derived knowledge. Mm -hmm. So in physics, for example, in relativity theory, we talk about the postulates of relativity, mm -hmm. and which are the foundation from which you derive the equations like E equals MC squared and all these things. So um, <coughs> we can think of that as Veda and Vedanta as derived knowledge. Okay. The former is called Shruti and the latter is Bruti. Vedanta belongs to the latter and includes metaphysics. I see no reason why uh, we cannot include science as a, also as part of Vedanta, except for the context and the language. Anything that is inferred or derived is Vedanta, from the Veda is Vedanta. Next one, please. Uh, so a small part of Vedantic thought and to shed light on modern physics. The approach is non-theistic. By this, I do not mean atheism, which is a personal matter, but the fact that we do not have to invoke God as authority to, uh, please note that the Hindu tradition, technically speaking, does not uh, leave much room for uh, theology, because we do not have a book of authority which we have to follow. Okay, we have the freedom of thought. Uh, uh, you know, for example, Gayatri Mantra says, that means our idea is to explore and understand. Okay. So, for example, recently, you know, Stephen Hawking said uh, there is no room for God in uh, uh, in cosmology or something. That is really not uh, it's uh, not original with him. I mean, uh, 200 years before him, uh, Laplace wrote one of the founders of both. Uh, scientific cosmology or celestial mechanics, as well as property theory, I wrote a five volume work on celestial mechanics and gave it to Napoleon. And Napoleon said, or in this huge book on the universe, how is it you don't mention God at all, or the creator at all? He said that, you know, uh, I don't need that hypothesis in my physics. So it's not a thesis, but if he wasn't a thesis, that's beside the point. The fact is, he does not need to invoke God to do that. But Newton thought it was necessary. But anyway, next one, please. <coughs> so, Vedanta has a rational basis, and it recognizes no authority but knowledge, Veda as authority. That is, human authority is not accepted. That is why, in fact, Madhva makes it a very uh, strong point that anything that is Purushaya must be treated with suspicion because humans are subject to error and deception. So unless it can ultimately rest on a Purushaya knowledge, uh, it has to be uh, treated with extreme caution. And at the same time, we must recognize Vedanta is not a mathematical system. It's a metaphysical system. At the same time, it's logical and rigorous. Yeah. Next question. So, uh, Two terms that we hear in metaphysics, one is called ontology. Best scientific theories like relativity are built on a foundation of postulates. Relativity has only two postulates. One about the that laws of physics are the same, uh, no matter which is the frame of reference, in all inertial frames. You can think of an inertial frame as a laboratory, whether you perform an experiment or observation in your laboratory, or somebody else does the same thing in a different laboratory, the result should be the same. A lot of people think the foundation of relativity, I mean, Einstein was led to relativity theory, especially special relativity, on the basis of uh, Michelson and Morley experiment. No, I will get to that later. And uh, the thing is, the, the key is the velocity of light uh, appears in Maxwell's equations. So if the velocity of light is not constant, if it depends upon the velocity of the source, 
then the expression for C changes. C, if C becomes C plus V, okay, and the, with the velocity of the source. That means the equation changes. That means uh, uh, Maxwell's equations are not invariant under uh, 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 this uh, transformation. That is what led him to relativity. Eventually, he gave the correct explanation for mckinson morley experiment also, because for more than 20, 25 years, it was a puzzle. I believe it's a similar story today with Bell's theorem and its explanation. We do not know what it means. The different people are giving different explanations, interpretations. Mm -hmm. so uh, Okay. Oh, we okay. lost two at the end. Okay. Sure. So, similarly, Veda is the ontology from which the epistemology of Vedanta is derived. Epistemology, uh, I should say applied epistemology, I'm using a very short uh, uh, Ontology is about the existence of the foundation. Okay. In quantum mechanics, there is no such clear division. If you look, you see, in relativity, you have the constancy of the velocity of light and the, in the uh, invariance of physical laws and uh, uh, different inertial frames. If you look at the postulates of quantum mechanics, uh, it's expressed entirely in mathematical terms, which really should be derived from, from you know, basic assumptions. That's not the case. It consists of computational techniques. Okay, next one, please. I'll get to that shortly. <coughs> so, in quantum mechanics and Vedanta, the common ground is both acknowledge the importance of empirical study and logic. Both recognize the importance of deduction by rational thought. Okay, so that is extremely important. So, in Patanjali, Patanjali is part of Vedanta. Please understand, my definition of Vedanta is very broad. Uh, I have had, uh, the, you know, disputes with people who feel that anything uh, that is not Advaita cannot be considered Vedanta. For example, they say Samkhya is not Vedanta because it has Prakriti and Purusha. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I don't make the distinction. That is because I'm putting up Vedanta as a tool in the understanding of metaphysics. Of uh, You see, Vedanta looks at two things. One, the human behavior on the basis of gunas and uh, daivasura and all that uh, thing. And it also looks at the world, at the universe. Okay. So uh, that is the metaphysics, the outside world and the, in and the part that is inside. Metaphysics is concerned with looking at the outside. Okay. That's what we are interested in when we talk about physics. So uh, I, I do not make a distinction between uh, uh, Dvaita, Advaita, or Sankhya, and all that. All of them to me are part of Vedanta. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Patanjali says that uh, Pratyaksha, Anumana, Agama. Pratyaksha, of course, is direct. Hmm? Anumana, is inferred. Agama is a collection of uh, all that is derived and all that. Okay? And so uh, both recognize duality and the puzzle of quantum mechanics to experiment with uh, mostly by a process of what we might call thought experiments. Uh, we will see there are remarkable similarities. Uh, uh, next one, please. Uh, so do we have justification in using a non-theistic approach uh, to Vedanta, because once we want to bring Vedanta and quantum physics together, or uh, uh, modern physics together, uh, you have to justify that because a lot of people think of Vedanta as scripture and they relate it to religion and part of religious thought, particularly true of people who are followers of Ramanuja and to some extent Madhva. Okay. <coughs> but Shankara has an uh, extraordinary <laughs> statement, where he says, scripture is not any word of God, but consists entirely of perceived truths. This perception can be from karma, that is actions, or empirical, and jnana, that is gnosis or thought. Okay. Which, uh, uh, so I'm citing this to say that I stand, with the position I'm taking in Vedanta has the support of uh, uh, some of our greatest philosophers. I'm not doing anything uh, you know, out of the ordinary. And then I mentioned Sir John Templeton because he is a he was a believing Christian, but he was open to other uh, the same. And he says, I believe all religions are becoming obsolete, thinking to ancient concepts. And he says that. 
And then Stephen Hawking says, philosophy has not kept pace with scientific advances. Okay, that's, uh, he's talking about philosophy, not the religion. Next one, please, but the most extraordinary of all is Swami Vivek, what Vivekananda had to say about uh, religion and science. But then the two can come together. <coughs> is religion to justify itself by the discoveries of reason through which every science justifies itself? Are the same methods of investigation that we apply to sciences and knowledge outside to be applied to the science of religion? Can we do that? And Vivekananda's answer is, in my opinion, this must be so. And I'm also of the opinion that the sooner it is done, the better. Not only will it be made scientific, as scientific as physics or chemistry, but we have greater strength because physics and chemistry has no internal mandate to vote for its truth, which religion has. Mm -hmm. Quick clarification. Right. So when, when he says, like, when he says science of religion, what does he mean? What is what sense well, he, he means? Uh, he means Vedanta. Okay. He means Vedanta, not a belief system. Yeah. This way. I'm uh, uh, doing this because a lot of people in, tend to be um, <coughs> um, upset uh, when you bring these things to it. No, was that the original quote in, in, in English? Or? Original in English. So in your opinion, Vedanta is religion? No, no, that's up to you. My yeah. point is Vedanta. When you say science of religion. He, and that is, I quoted Swami Vivekananda. Yeah. Vedanta, he looks at it as the rational part of religion. Because he says, you see, Swami Vivekananda says that I teach nothing but Vedanta. Okay? So Vedanta is the methodology. And it's a human creation. Vedanta is not. Shankara also says, scripture is not the word of God. Okay? It's important to recognize. Mm -hmm. So, Vedanta includes the study of the physical world as well as human behavior. Okay, that, okay human behavior may be seen as a blend of uh, Daivik, uh, and I won't spend any time on this, I'm just mentioning this, and Asuri. Okay, you will find that in the Gita also. Yeah. And uh, so, the tendencies in different proportions, no clear line between human and divine as in semantic relations. You see, if you look at uh, Christianity and Islam and Judaism, they draw a very clear line between the human and the divine. Okay. In uh, Hindu tradition, it is not there. That is why a, a great human being can be treated as a divinity because of the dominance of divine traits. That's how we treat Krishna and Ram, okay. that the divine traits dominate. And, and this analysis is done by, I mean, this is done by analysis of gunas, traits of all others and tamas. Okay. That is, uh, these are the divine traits of all. And next one, please. So as metaphysics, so when you look at the internal thing, that goes into the spiritual aspect and human behavior. But when you look at the outside world with the eyes of Vedanta, which is my interest at the time, uh, we interpret metaphysics as analysis of theories about the physical world. It is one step above physics. Okay. Vedantic metaphysics has concerned itself about two major areas of great contemporary interest. One is reality, and the other is consciousness. I'm not going to spend any time on consciousness, because uh, that itself is a vast subject. But I will touch on where actually it becomes relevant. Okay. Uh, uh, we include Dvaita, Advaita, as well as Sankhya as part of Vedanta, as opposed to some strict advocates of Advaita. Some people say that Sankhya cannot be considered as part of Vedanta. Somebody is trying to be Sankhya cannot be considered because it has Prakriti and Purusha. In that case, we, because anything that has the slightest hint of two, they say it's not Vedanta. Okay, that kind of fanaticism is not needed. Not helpful. In that case, we should leave out with this uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutra also because it begins with uh, Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirvada because you have 